Hello everybody, it is Badger Wild and we are back once again with another Space Engineers tutorial video. Today we're going to be learning how to do a scriptless solar tracker. Now this is important because you are going to end up on servers that do not have scripting or will not allow for scripted control blocks to be onto the system or onto the server. And this is just a nifty little engineering trick to know to build your own scriptless solar panels that will turn and travel with the sun. Now, what you're going to need is you're going to need your regular building blocks, which are very necessary, your rotors, hinges, landing gear, button panel, a gyroscope, a battery, solar panel, and your good old control seat. Now, starting with this, we're going to start first off with a large grid light armor block. We're going to lay one down. Now, from that block, we're going to build four up. I can do this here. Or I'm going to use the quick building here. Now, the next block that goes on is going to be the hinge. And the way you do the hinge is you need to put it in a position to where when it bends, it's perpendicular to the path of the sun. You'll see why here in a minute. So we're going to turn it like so. And then on top of that, we are going to add a rotor. Now, the next thing that we're going to add is going to be a battery so we can control this. And we're going to add just a few more small armor blocks down here just for show. Now, we're going to add our control seat so that we can control this monstrosity. We're going to build this uh, so that we can put eight solar panels on. So to do that, we're going to need eight blocks boom just like that now this is the the other part that we got to do <laughs> we got to go down here to this and we got to lock this in because if this hinge applies any weight it is going to bend and we do not want it to bend we want it to just sit there another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the this block off and you are also going to want to increase the braking torque pretty good. Up to about 11, maybe. What we're going to do next is we're going to add our other, our, our solar tracking system. Now, the way this works is as follows. You have to know something about big grids or about small grids and separate grids. What we have here are is a separate subgrid right here, which is connected by this rotor. The rotor is connected to the hinge and that makes this entire thing into its own subgrid. We're going to create a separate but disconnected grid. And the easiest way to do that is to go in and just drop a nice line that up just about as perfect as we can in and drop that sucker there. So we drop this landing gear. Once welded up, this magnetic plate is just going to stay there. Okay? Next, we're going to build out from that five, one in the middle and two on each side. Now, next is number eight, and this is our small grid solar panel. We are going to install right there. Now, what this is going to do is when this thing is in the solar or when it's uh, being hit by the sun, what will happen is this thing will power this small gyroscope. And that's the next piece you're going to need. Then after that, you're going to need a control panel button on the small grid. Now, the reason for this is this is just enough power to turn on this rotor, this uh, gyroscope and nothing else. We're going to override the gyroscope so this turns. Once this reaches a, a narrow pathway, in other words, where the solar panel is perpendicular with the sun's rays it will shut it off entirely and we have a dust storm coming in wonderful let's add this on there now this is the next most important part you have to put your solar panels on perpendicular to the solar tracker itself just like this if you don't do this it doesn't work because what will happen is your solar panels will be turned to the flattest edge, just like your, uh, 
your little deal here. This is what your solar panel should look like if you are doing everything correctly. Now, what's gonna happen next is we're going to very slowly cause this hinge to bend over so that it's flat. And then we're going to start tweaking with the gyroscope up there to try and get this thing to turn as it goes in the solar grid. And you're gonna see this thing work and you're gonna be impressed, trust me. Like so, we're gonna put reverse and we're also going to add hinge lock because when we put this hinge down we gotta lock it all up go into the hinge and we are going to turn the velocity 4.9 now where are we going here let's disable the hinge lock and there we go now we just have to sit back here and wait until we get just about a complete right angle. Wait until we get that right angle. Then we're going to press the rotor, the hinge lock, and lock this sucker in place. Now, we've got all this done. <laughs> here, oh, let me get out of here. Since all that's done now, we're going to head over here. And now we're going to play with this thing. Now we're going to hop in. Press K on this. We're going to override controls and we're going to try and just hit the pitch here and see if we can't get it to turn. Usually it's the pitch. Not the pitch. Let's try the y'all. Okay, there's our uh, crap. Then we've disconnected. Wait, wait, wait. All right. Slow down, slow down. There we go. And that's the thing. Now, the reason I'm doing this incrementally is because every planet is different. The gravity will have an effect and you're just going to have to play with the override controls. And there we go. That should be enough to stop it. Let it go here. And when it lines up, our sun's right there. When it lines up, the braking torque should be enough to stop it. And this is why you need the braking torque engaged, because the braking torque, <clears throat> if it's not engaged, uh, it will simply spin it and the inertia will spin the entire system around. And this, uh, there we go. Our gyroscope, see, there's the problem. The braking torque's not enough and it's just spinning around recharging it. So we're gonna try this one more time. Like I said, this is a trial and error thing, but usually when you get it to spin, that's when you need more braking torque on it. So let's go back in here, go to our rotor, and we will add a bit more braking torque. And there we go. It's now locked in. Now you've got a scriptless solar tracker. This grid here, probably can provide close to a megawatt, if not more. And as usual, yes, you can stack this. This will work with the oxygen farm. You just gotta, this arm has to be replaced with uh, conveyors, junctions, probably the new pipe junctions would be the best way to go. And then this section here just has to be replaced with a conveyor tube. And then you just need to make this an advanced rotor. And that's it. The same principle, same concept, and now, when the sun reaches a certain height. And let me just hop into admin power here and we can take this up a little bit more. Let me just, we'll go up just a little bit, watch and it will move. We'll go really far here. And you'll see it'll just stop right when it hits the height of the sun. Now what happened here? Man, I have to add just a little bit more breaking torque. So yeah. Let's see what happens here. It's probably just going to do a full rotation. Ah, that's what happened. The sun went up so far, it passed the rotation point. Let's just see what happens here. Stop, breaking torque, and it reapplies itself almost immediately. What happened was this thing just kind of shot past it, and so it just kind of went past the middle point. But as you can see here, this thing will just keep rotating. It'll keep doing it. It's got a little bit of wiggle to it, but if you put the inertial dampeners on, or the inertial lock, it'll lock the system in. 
But as I said, this is a really neat little trick to know. This works really good in space. You're probably going to need something to attach the sensor panel to so that it will turn properly. But like I said, this here, this little setup uh, directed towards sunlight and turning constantly can provide a megawatt's worth of power. But like I said, this can provide close to a megawatt worth of power. It'll just build up on me. You see right there, it just moves on its own. Um, as I said before, uh, you're just going to have to be careful with it as you get it to turn. Once you get it to rotate, then you need to modify the amount of braking torque that you want. You do want a decent amount of braking torque so it will stop it immediately once there's no power to the uh, gyroscope. And you just have to figure out where the gyroscope goes at. Give it a second before it engages. And uh, as usual, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, hope this helps you out in your future builds and your future adventures in Space Engineers. As always, play smarter, not harder. You guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.